everyone. This is Nisi Lexi. Welcome back to our brand new episode for the Boss on Music. And in today's episode, I have the lovely Emmanuel Faded. She's the one and only Toronto-based artist. You guys have seen her before two years ago when we did the Women uh, Features Entrepreneur for All the Women Around the World. She was one of them. And as well as we also talked to her a few couple of months back when she released her music video for Saturn, her whole album um, release conversation we went over that and today we have her for the first time in our live recording in a studio to have to discuss with us the things that she has been working on and all the COVID-19 drama I'm super super excited to have her here she's one of our sisters in the fashion industry as well as in the music industry here in Toronto with great honor welcome my Manny so much Nisi <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, for those who don't know so much about you, you as an artist, obviously, and also being a Sudanese Canadian, can you kind of a little bit reintroduce yourself and tell us about what you do and who you are? Yes. So I go by the name of Amani Ilfated. Um, so I was born in what's now known as South Sudan. I uh, lived in Canada pretty much most of my life. i um, been working on music uh, for her since I was pretty much nine years old pushing hard, releasing albums and everything. So the type of music that I do is a mixture of R&B, of um, pop, of Afrobeat, and of trap, a little bit of reggae in there as well. And I released an album called Saturn last year, um, October 19th, which is almost a year ago. So uh, the project that I'm working on. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so last time I know we were discussing about your Saturn music and album. So how has that experience been since you have last released it? And then now it's like you're almost close to one year anniversary since you released your album. Can you walk us through all that joy and the, all that excitement that went behind it? <laughs> yeah, um, so leading up to the album release, I think it was the most chaotic year of my life just leading to the day of the release. Um, so I think at one point I was sleeping in the studio, you know, leaving at 4 a.m., getting up at 7, doing all this work just to be able to, to put out the album. Um, so it was like, it was a crazy, crazy, crazy schedule. Um, and then after it was released, there were a few shows, there were a few um, things going on, but because I released it so late, there wasn't a lot going on at the time. So, you know, when you're like in the studio 24 seven and then suddenly you're not in the studio anymore. Now it's, you know, performance practices and, you know, interviews. It's very different. Very, very, very different. Awesome. Awesome. And I'm actually glad because I do see you that you also went to the state and perform and was this a special you also performing with Regina? Yeah, yeah. Um, I went back to my, I guess, my homecoming show, uh, since I grew up in Saskatchewan, uh, did a show out there, which was, I feel it was so surreal because, you know, this is where I grew up and, you know, all my friends are there and it's, it, it was very different. <laughs> That's amazing. It's like a full circle, just like where you started and then you on up to creating the dream and making the reality and now coming back and actually sharing that dream with your hometown people. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was really great. Yeah. <laughs> So I know that recently you posted a couple of announcements about an upcoming song, which is called A Masterpiece. Uh, can you let's just talk about what it is briefly and where can people look forward to listen to? Yeah, so Masterpiece is a very interesting uh, track. Um, so it's with Cocophonics Records. Um, they called me, I think it was like last year, and just asked if I wanted to work on a track with them, and I thought it was really a good idea, went into studio and the song was just so catchy. The lyrics were so, um, so sassy, I think. I, I really, like, I'm excited for people to hear the lyrics. Um, there's a reference in there to Alec Black, so I was, like, already sold when I saw Alec Black's name on there. Um, Alec Black, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, is a very, very, very prominent South Sudanese supermodel. Like, she's, like, the icon in South Sudan, so I was really excited to see that. So we wound up recording that before COVID happened. Um, and then I uh, shot a music video, uh, but because of COVID, we just decided to hold off on the release. And now it's finally going to be released September 14th. Um, there will be a link on my Instagram that uh, you can check out. Awesome. Perfect. So I'll make sure to also post the link in the description below so that people can actually go check it out. And apart from the Saturn, also, where can people purchase it and find your Saturn album that you released last year? 
Uh, so it's available on all platforms. Um, so you can find it at Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, the whole works. And then also you can check out my website, uh, www.amaniilfated.com. So there's a commerce section there. You can actually buy the Saturn t-shirts and you can buy the Saturn album. Cool. So speaking with the whole COVID, I know a lot of shows, obviously, as an artist, has been positive to COVID. So how has it the COVID uh, obviously, it impacted a lot of people, so especially in the art and entertainment industry. So, how do you manage and cope with the whole pandemic and stay active with the creativity? I'll be, I'll be completely honest. I'm still devastated. <laughs> it's not as bad as it was before, but I, I was devastated when um, they first announced it was the pandemic, and I had all these incredible shows lined up um one of them was the costa rica show so i was thinking like you know maybe it's not so bad maybe it'll end in a month so i can go and do my costa rica show but just the cancellations came in pretty much my entire world tour u.s shows everything canceled so i think for a lot of musicians it was just heartbreaking and coming off of an album you need to tour the album you need to promote you need to tell people about it and let people hear it live and I connect better with my audience live. Um, so I just felt devastated for like a full month. I didn't go outside. I just hid in my bedroom and I was just like waiting for the world to, to calm down, peeking in my blinds. Like, is it over yet? <laughs> and yeah, but I, I've, I've managed to cope now. Um, so like, I know like a lot of artists are very stressed about it. A lot of artists are. They're not sure. We're not sure what to do. So the only thing we do in this time period is just go to the studio and make music. That's all we can do at this time. That industry obviously shifting with the experience of the COVID and a lot of artists using the social media platform, doing some live Instagram parties and being engaged within the whole medium, trying to utilize that uh, aspect of the medium. So how do you see or are you actually a part of that new movement of the using the social media as a new way of kind of engaging with your listeners? Yes. So it took me a while to be able to do it, but I, I decided to take a different approach because I, what I saw is a lot of musicians jumping on and doing their streaming live. And for me, it's like, I, I feel like because I was for years, I think it's been five years nonstop show after show after show after studio sessions like I used to live in the studio as B. Morales will probably tell you I practically lived there um so when COVID hit and I had that whole month where I wasn't doing anything I kind of took a whole thing where I started just talking to fans like sending messages you know doing voice notes little videos here and there just like almost engaging with them in a more personal level and I found that I learned a lot about people uh, that way and I don't know but that's just, that's just my take on the social media and how maybe I connected with them um, but I did see a lot of organizations like South Sudan Unite they did their little uh, Zoom parties which was I thought it was going to be a typical office meeting but you know you get a bunch of people like nearly 50 people in one room and you have a DJ in Nairobi playing all the hottest beats, all of a sudden you see people dancing and it became this thing um, where almost every Saturday and Sunday, everyone was tuning in to like South Sudan Unite, what are we doing today? <laughs> or DJ Biggie Dang, what, what's happening? You know, so they all, uh, that, that's what I was doing for most of the summer, which is Saturday nights in my, you know, kitchen, <laughs> dancing <laughs> to Afro beats and stuff. So I think that's how... Um, a lot of musicians are coping as i mentioned before they're doing the live streams they're doing the uh the concerts online concerts which aren't the same but you know what it's getting music to people so it's uh yeah that's amazing how you can see like a lot of people is just kind of trying to cope with the thing in a more positive route yeah the fact that the uh, you guys were able to kind of come in as a community even it doesn't matter where you are at work because we're all experiencing this together and just kind of trying to find a fun aspect out of it and kind of unite in a way where like music is involved that's actually kind of brilliant and the fact that a lot of you guys actually in the entertainment and kind of utilizing that time and also bringing that wholesome and just kind of positivity around it it is very important i 
personally missed it. I seen the highlight of it when you posted on Instagram. So like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's now still like every Saturday. I, I, actually, in in about half an hour, um, they're gonna start another one. So okay, I might join that. I'm <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, like it's with nightclubs closed, um, with you know the borders closed, everything is closed, so you can't really connect to people. So I feel like, especially for South Sudanese, and it's not just for South Sudanese, by the way, too. It's also Africans can join too. You don't have to even be African; you can be anywhere. You just need the Zoom link and you you join in. But I feel like it's just it's allowing people to connect. It's allowing people to you know have fun. I've seen people passing their numbers around, so <laughs> they're just. They're having a really good time, and it's safe, and you're not spreading COVID. So, that's really good. Yeah. Social distancing, but it's still social. Social, exactly. Very, very social. <laughs> that is for sure. So, currently, I know you said that you're working a lot in the studio. You're just kind of sitting there doing a lot of crafting work. So, what do you expect out of your stuff that you're cooking behind the scenes? Ah, uh, well... <laughs> Originally, I wasn't going to to do a project. I'll be really honest, because I just came off of Saturn, and that was almost like three and a half years in the making. So I was like, oh, COVID's here. I'm going to sleep for two years, and then I'm going to come back. But um, what ends up happening is that the past six months for me, I guess, have been so heavy, so crazy dealing with things that I, I, I can't even, like, I still can't even compute what has happened in the past. Um, but what I found was very inspiring for me was this whole connection with health, this whole connection with um, with friends like family. Like for me, I'm not really connected with my family, but I found that there's people in my life that are very, very familial to me. So I started connecting with them. I started learning more about myself. I started learning more about other people. And it just created this whole, like, I don't know, it's an ultra feeling where I just feel like I just want to write about all those experiences. So I'm now starting a new project. Uh, the code name is Divine, but <laughs> yeah, so I actually finished producing one of the songs today. Um, and I've been working with um, a lot of other producers, including uh, Jason Spanu, who is off his tour with Frank Ocean. So he was like, come into the studio, let's work on something. And then uh, B Morales and I are probably going to be cooking something up again too. So we'll see. We'll see how this goes and where it takes us. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's actually a lot of exciting things that come in your way. I'm super glad that you're able to utilize kind of like a new perspective and also kind of give us something fresh. So yeah. I'm, I'm hoping to that. And do let us know, like, once it's done, I would definitely, definitely want to sit down and have another listening to it because your last album was bang on, to be honest with you. It's, like, different track. I remember myself, like, I was doing a lot of, like, contract work and things like that. I was in the library uh, the channel reference, and I was literally, like, just blasting that for two hours. I was just listening oh to that. <laughs> <laughs> It was a crazy, Thank you. Yeah, it was like, because it takes you like every song has a different tone to it. And then there's this one particular song where like, it's like, I'm from Ye, I'm from Juba. That was just like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have to represent, you know? <laughs> that was a good song too. It was a great song. A lot of like, there was like a nice tone melody, like very chill and calm. And there's like a club party kind of songs in there as well. So I really love that project. I definitely look forward to hearing what you guys are actually producing upcoming weeks for your next album. Yeah, well, it's going to be, well, we're going to try to do it bigger, bigger and better. <laughs> go big or go home, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, these days you got to. <laughs> amazing, yeah. amazing. So, who, like, I know growing up, you mentioned earlier that you were inspired by Celine Dion at an early age. So who are other artists that now that you have obviously grown in the music industry that along the way kind of inspired you to also figure out or defining yourself as an artist? Who do you? Yeah, so um, vocally, because there's different aspects to it too. There's vocally, it was Nelly Furtado. Yeah. Um, it was also her songwriting, vocally and, and songwriting wise. Um, I just loved how candid and honest she was in her, in her lyrics and how her voice was just so like raw and exciting. Um, obviously Celine Dion's voice too. I, I, I love her, but what I really loved about Celine Dion was her showmanship and how when she got on stage, it was like, we're here and we're doing the show. 
<laughs> and you guys are gonna enjoy it. Let's do this, you know. So I really, I really enjoyed that about her. Um, another artist that I, I don't speak too much about, but I, I, I totally love her is uh, MIA. Um, her, her antics, her, her mindset. Like I think that's what inspired me to not write just writing a song and recording it it's like actually feel it and see the song in your head and dream about it and have it all visualized and each song is now a whole concept in itself so she was the one that inspired me to do that and then um, as I got older I discovered this band called Pantagram um, who I'm completely obsessed with but um, yeah like just their production their performances they're just you know these two people from upstate New York just they went to a barn one day and recorded music and I just thought that was like such a great story that for me I'm just like yeah keep the team small just go and write and uh, shout out to Josh I'm always like sending him messages asking him for production you know advice and even yesterday I asked him like hey is this song Ethio Jazz like what's going on and he's like probably annoyed by me but Pantagram is one of those big inspirations for me too that's amazing. So, speaking of being inspired and everything, um, so I'm being obviously in a lot of like in the music industry performing and as well as like being in the studio. So, who, what do you think are the question would be here as what are some of your most favorite moments as an artist as far as favorite moments that have happened or or that I experience or have happened it, either like you being in the show or you just being in a recording studio or just writing a song like what was that moment most memorable moment that you're like wow okay um the two I guess there's two most memorable moments for me um and it's mostly because of the feeling of it um so the first one is when I'm performing and the audience just gets it and they're just they're into it I, I i love that one big one that i had was when i was in uh, minneapolis for the um the south sudan united 2019 and i sang the song the hills and usually when i sing it like nobody really some people don't really get it but i uh, there was an energy in the room that day everybody got the words they understood it and when i put my hand up you know the black power <laughs> everybody got up and everybody did it and it was like oh like hundreds of people getting up and putting it it was just this moment and I, I i loved it because it was that was the meaning of the song was for everybody to unite and everybody to say yo this is this is a problem or this is our strength this is our power let's let's stand together so moments like that when the audience is just like into it and they know and they understand or they sing the words it's, it's really great um the other one it sounds tedious to a lot of people but i love the feeling when i'm in studio and i've been in studio for the past maybe 12 hours 13 hours sometimes even 24 hours i haven't left or I haven't slept i haven't showered i haven't whatever i know it's gross but you know sipping my tea on the couch just asking in the moment of like okay i haven't slept i haven't done anything but i know what the purpose is of doing that i'm making these sacrifices for the music and then you hear the music and you're like that was worth no sleep that was worth you know forgetting to eat that was worth not going to the gym or hiding and not seeing the sun it was worth it in the end i think those moments for me are just like wow you know actually very on point that's actually could be a negative knowledge too because of the fact that a lot of people when they see artists they just see the glitz and the glam but they don't see the hard work that goes behind it the sleepless night everything that you guys do behind the scene we just see the final product we're like yes we love it <laughs> it's so true it's so funny because i was talking about about that to someone a, a while back it's like when we're on tour or when we're in the studio it, it's literally like a workout. People assume that it's just all fun and, and games and talking. It's like, no, we're working. We're working so hard and we, we don't have that. We're not just, you know, drinking and, and, and whatever. Some people smoking in the studio. It's, you have hours upon hours upon hours of work and you have to be patient and you have to hear the same thing over and over and over again. And, you know, when you're on tour, you're on this plane, you're on that plane, you're, sleeping in the sky and then you land and then you do your show 
and you don't get to have the fun that everybody else is having. You know, even if you're going to the club, you're working at the club. You're not, you're not dancing and having a good time. You're sitting there making sure everybody else is okay or, yeah. you know, just taking your pictures. It's hard work, but it, it pays off in the end. I, I feel like just the moment when you hear the song and it's finished, yeah. and maybe it's on the radio or on TV and you're like, wow. Wow, <laughs> you know. It gives you that satisfaction like you finally did it. Yeah. I feel a like great feeling because a lot of times, even me as a creative uh, person who I do a lot of like uh, graphic work, Sometimes, like, when I do graphic work, it can spend hours and hours of going back and forth. They're like, no, this is not going to change the text, change the color. And then finally, when you see the, the poster itself being printed and put out in the show, or it's like a headline or some of the big artists coming, and you're like, wow, I actually did that work. Yeah. Amazing feelings. So I do understand the fact that, like, a lot of the hard work that you do, and then at the end, when you just look back, you're like, wow, you actually produced that? It's yeah. A great feeling. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, also take me back to how, do you kind of like, obviously the writing process for you as an artist, it takes different process. Some people like to work at night. Other people like to just kind of like mellow or spend some few days away from people in order to create it. So what is that journey like for you as a writer, songwriter? Um, it's a mixture. I like to, I like to stay away from the studio for months at a time, especially after I release a project, because what I find is that if I continue to go, everything's going to start to sound the same. Mm -hmm. And I don't give myself a, a break. So I usually give myself, like I say, my my lifetime. So I go and actually go and live life yeah. and have more experiences and then go back to the studio and write about those experiences. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how I kind of get the inspiration, kind of like what happened with COVID. Now I have all these inspirations going back into studio I'm like oh I have so much to write about now um and then when it comes to the writing process I always say that it just falls from the sky or you know God just kind of like whispers in my ear and says okay this is what you're writing now and I'm like oh well it wasn't it's almost like not even my choice it's just it just pours out and just goes on to the pit pen you know pen and paper and, and that's it so um and then in terms of production um Usually I'm like either angry, I'm happy, I'm confused, I'm not sure what happened or I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning and go to my keyboard and I'm like, okay, now we're going to do something and that's that's how the music starts and then the lyrics later. Awesome. So for any young artists obviously that are upcoming right now thinking of getting into the music industry and wanted to become uh, an artist or songwriter or whatever have you in the production industry, what advice do you have for them? Yeah, so general advice that I would say, um, I mean, there's the obvious practice, there's the obvious, you know, learn as much as you can, don't just dabble in one industry or one aspect of the industry, like if you're a producer, don't just dabble in production, go into marketing and learn more about the whole industry because it'll help you in the future and it also help you to not get into bad deals or bad contracts or, you know, just get into bad situations in general. Um, so that's, uh, one piece of advice, um, that I would give. Um, the other thing, I guess it's more geared towards like mental health when it, when it comes into it. Um, only because not a lot of people talk about what you're going to go through mentally in order to get to where, you know, you want to be. Um, so I know like a lot of people aren't, don't have the best circumstances, but I would say build yourself a little community. Join a community if you if you can. You know, speak up about your feelings. Speak up about the things that you know are going through your head right now. Because I see a lot of like, especially in the South Sudanese and African community, people aren't speaking about what they what what they're going through, and then they're going to jump into the music industry, and yeah, in some way they kind of lose themselves or get confused, or they feel like they're not supported, or they're not you know they're not gonna go far so i would say try your best to build a little community whether it's just two friends that you know who have your back or you know it's a organization that you can call or you can contact anytime i think that's like one thing that i just really wanted to push out those are those are actually very valid information i think you have to kind of even though like you work hard you know where you go this to be an aspect but also you know, your mental health is very important and that's for me, I feel like that is a very important negative knowledge that you actually brought up because not a lot of people take it seriously or even within our community itself. It's a huge stigma people don't talk about it. 
And the fact mm. that you make it okay for us to kind of discuss that is actually very valid. And thank you for bringing that up as well. And also, where can people find you in social media or anything? Like, what are your social media handle? Where can they find you? If they want to listen to your music or just kind of keep in touch with you. Yeah, so um, my typical handle, Amani Ilfated. Um, pretty much you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, mm-hmm. uh, Twitter. Not on Twitter so much, but, you know, <laughs> uh, you can find me there. Um, and then obviously my website, uh, www.amaniilfated.com. You can always find me there. Um, yeah, those are... Those. Super. Thank you so much, Amani, for being here today. I know you're a super busy lady. <laughs> Take your time out of the day to be with us here. I do appreciate you and keep us posted with your next album that is coming up. And for those who wanted to uh, listen to Saturn, you can go to Amani's website, www.amanielfaded.com. You'll f- find her web- her uh, whole album that she released last year, as well as also check her on Instagram, YouTube. She has amazing video that she shot also for the hills last time it's all about empowering and i know we were gonna do some play before you depart i I always do that with artists so we try to ask them three questions where we play a little game but let's see how i do right now with this game okay all right (laughs) so this one has to be with either you sing it or you dump it Okay. All right. All right. So question number one. If you were to pick one thing, either write of more experiment-based songs or write a club song, which one would you write, sing it, and dump it? Um... Would you rather write experiments, like based on your own ex- personal experience, or just for clubbing and party and things like that? Experience. I would write more experience songs. <laughs> um, just because I'm emotional, I guess. I have all these emotions I want to like release, you know, and put it into music and mm-hmm. connect with people. With that. So I would definitely write something based on experience. Okay, that's fair enough. Okay, the next question is, um, would you rather sing, like stay as an as, as an artist, or use your talent and platform to impact people as a, or as a music teacher? Ooh, that one's tough. <laughs> I want both. Fair enough. Both. Yeah. Okay. I usually say why, but both, I guess you just kind of wanted to do. Yeah, because I like, I can't not say, I love the stage, I love the studio, I love all of that. Yeah. But I do also want to impact the world and teach people, so I don't know which one I would choose more. <laughs> awesome. So the last question is actually from our studio production people. They wanted to know when was it the moment that you realized singing was for you? Like when was your aha moment? My aha? It was um when I was four. <laughs> and we were playing lava in the living room. So for those that don't know lava, you're not supposed to touch the floor. You're supposed to just, like jump on the chair. So we were all jumping on the chair and the TV was on. We didn't really have cable. It was like CBC or something. And Celine Dion was singing and she was like performing live. I think it was even just a commercial. It wasn't even like a full show. Yeah. But I stopped. I lost the game because my one foot was still on the ground. <laughs> but I lost the game. But I was like, huh, I want to do that. <laughs> and then from then on, I was like, that's what I'm going to do since I was four. Oh, wow. That's amazing. It's yeah. like- that was your moment of stopping the game itself and then be like, no, this is the game of life. <laughs> I know. And it, it's terrible because I lost and I was like the champion at that time. So I felt bad that I lost, but I was like, yeah, at least I have my whole life plan now. I just plan my, my entire life. It's, 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 it's very yeah. important that like the fact that you find what you wanted to do at a very young age and then you work towards it. That's a, such an amazing thing. I don't even know what I wanted to do for you. <laughs> hey, it wasn't profound. It wasn't like I didn't even know how to write. I I, probably, I didn't speak English even at that time. 
I didn't even know how to say what I wanted to do. I just, it was like in the back of my mind that I'm like, oh, well, we planned our life. I'll carry on with lava. You know? Yeah. That is so important. It's an amazing story. Uh, thank you so much, Amani, for being here today. I had such a blissful time to kind of interact with you and also just kind of like get to know more about your music uh, career as well as understanding where the whole inspiration kind of aspect come about. Until and yeah, so keep doing. Make sure to go on Spotify, follow her on Spotify and Google, um, iTunes Music or what have you. All the basically listening streaming platform. Make sure to go check out Amani's updated album Saturn in there, as well as looking forward to her September 14, where she will be releasing a Master Phonics. Yeah. So until next time, I'll more be more than happy to have you guys back again here. And Amani, feel free to come back anytime. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Most welcome. Thank you.